story one. My husband and I told our relatives a few years ago, we wanted to buy a country house by the lake. Almost everyone lives in apartments in our country, so our families were very happy. My mother immediately decided that she wanted to arrange a vegetable garden in the yard of this house. My husband's sister said it would be a great place to take her children for the summer. My sister started fantasizing about family picnics. My husband's brother joked that it would be an excellent place to get intoxicated on weekends. We were both terrified. We didn't want any of this. We wanted to have a place where we could feel truly at home. Where we could rest. Where we could arrange everything to our taste. Where there would be peace and quiet and no family squabbles. Where we could raise our future children. Ultimately, we decided to tell them that the deal had fallen through and there would be no house. After all, it's not even their business. We were the only ones buying the house, which had nothing to do with them. We didn't have to tell them. We only told the truth to our best friends, whom we were sure wouldn't spoil anything. The house is beautiful, and my friends and I often go there on weekends. Two years have passed, and my sister found out about the house by accident, because one of my friends posted a photo from there. Now, our family are furious and call us greedy. Many of the relatives don't want to talk to us until we give them the address. My mom even asked for spare keys. This is exactly the hype that we tried so hard to avoid. I don't think I'm an idiot, but my husband is starting to hesitate about what we should have done. So am I the idiot for lying to my family for two years that my house purchase deal fell through? I was flabbergasted over your mom planning out a garden and immediately demanding keys to the house. Who are these people that are pole vaulting over boundaries like this? The heck. If your relatives don't want to talk to you. Until you give them access to the house, that's one problem solved. Don't give them access. They don't talk to you. And that's that. No spare key for your mother. Send them links to Lakeside Airbnbs. If they want to spend time at the lake or at a house they don't own, they should look into Airbnb houses. Keep your house to yourself. Stand firm up. Think of all their plans for a house that's not theirs. Then look at the beautiful home you've created and picture it being ruined by greedy and entitled relatives. That should strengthen your resolve to keep them at arm's length. Not the idiot, and neither is hubby unless he gives in to their demands. Your relatives suck, though. As having a place to go to get away from it all and visit family, it's rude to just start making plans for someone else's home. You need to learn to stand up to your family op. Lying about having the house was never going to work in the long run. They were going to find out eventually. You could have handled it better. It's wild that you thought it would be better to lie about buying a house rather than having a conversation that sets clear boundaries. I have a parent where it's just easier to lie about anything because he always has a comment or criticism about everything. I don't know what this person's family is like. But from my perspective, I can almost understand just lying to eliminate all that extra unneeded stress. I mean, is it the best choice? Definitely not, but I get it. Op, if you really want to mess with your mom's head and prove the point even further, try this. Give your mom some random key you have lying around and give her an address that doesn't exist that is several hours' journey from where she lives. Tell her she cannot go without your permission. Then see what happens when she tries to sneak into your place without asking first. First the place won't be there, and she'll be really angry about the wasted journey. She'll know you messed with her, but if she says anything to you, she'll be showing herself up for not respecting your boundaries. She really ought to keep her mouth shut and just swallow. But you can be sure she'd blow up at you because she won't be able to stand for you making a fool of her. Somehow I doubt you'll do it but it's fun for you to have in your head as you tell her no. So for context, I'm a 41-year-old female. I've been married to a wonderful husband for 20 years and we're still madly in love. Due to mental illness, my husband can't work, so I'm the breadwinner in our family. This works well, I got a high-paying job, don't have overtime and mostly work from home. My husband is our homemaker and seriously, he's excellent at it. Last year, I bought us a new house with a big garden. We have quite a high fence around our property, so looking into our house isn't easy. You'd have to stand on your toes to peek over the fence. One of our neighbors, let's call her B, is incredibly nosy. When we moved in, she was the first to show up, 
not to help, but to gossip about other neighbors and warn us not to trust them too much and things like that. Two months ago, my husband's best friend lost his job, together with his wife, who thought that a jobless man who couldn't provide didn't deserve her. The poor guy struggled enormously with bills, divorce, and an upcoming depression, so my husband and I decided to get him out of this situation. We have a spare bedroom that we wanted to turn into a gym room, but the room is still empty. So we offered this room to our friend without asking for rent or any contribution, just to help him be able to breathe again and focus on the future without having to worry about rent, bills, etc. The divorce is nasty enough. The poor guy doesn't need more stress. It works out well. He's a very nice guy and doesn't demand things from us. He's just happy to have a safe space to heal and get back on his feet. We do things together, but he also stays happily in his room when my husband and I want to be alone. When I was grocery shopping a few days ago, I met some neighbors who gave me weird looks, which confused me. Since I'm not the type to brush things off, I stopped and asked what the problem was. B had been snooping around our house and spreading nasty rumors in the neighborhood that I live together with two men and the men in my house change. She even called it openly a whorehouse since she rarely sees me go to work and my husband never goes to work. She spread in the neighborhood that I must earn my money on my back. Otherwise, I couldn't afford such a nice house. I was livid and told my neighbors on the spot what was the truth and then I left. Two worked up to focus on groceries. Now in the parking lot, I saw B. In my fury and rage, I stormed up to her and started screaming. I told her that whoever I invite into my house is none of her business and to stay the heck away from us. My family is not her concern. If she ever bad mouthed me again, that wouldn't go well. Then I simply left, not wanting to hear any word from her. Now some of my friends think I massively overreacted while others think I was just protecting my family and friends. Gossip can hurt badly too, so am I the idiot, not the idiot. This may just be the New York in me, but I think you did the right thing. Honestly, I can't believe you had the strength even to hold back, because I think what you did was mild. People are too comfortable now to talk about others because there are no consequences, so I'm glad you stood up for your family. The Louisiana in me would have probably punched her in the nose. OB don't waste the opportunity to mention to any neighbors that she starts all these rumors so no one knows what she's busy doing. Tell them everything she said about each of them. Make it up. Make it outrageous. Turn her into the pariah. But you should tell your other neighbors what B told you about them. Make them understand what a two-faced witch that B is. Oh, and if she doesn't stop, get a lawyer. Scare her with the cease and desist letter, and if she keeps it up, sue her for slander. My husband and I have been together for over 20 years, but have never married. Our son, 19, came out as gay five years ago, and of course we supported him completely. He has a boyfriend who he's been official with since then, and he's a great kid, and I'm glad they're happy together. Now here's the issue. My father-in-law is a very old and very phobic man. He doesn't have social media, so keeping him from finding out about our son being gay wasn't hard. He's leaving my husband and son each more than half a million when he dies, and I know for sure he wouldn't leave this money once he finds out our son is gay. So with the wedding coming up, we told our son his boyfriend couldn't come. He tried to argue that he could just come as a friend, but we have said no to that. We're worried our father-in-law would catch them holding hands or being cute with each other and that would be that. Our son is now refusing to go to the wedding and even said if his boyfriend can't come, he'll go nuclear and just tell his grandfather. We've tried to explain that he'd be throwing away so much money, but he doesn't care. Am I the idiot? Well, that's a huge mistake. I would certainly take half a million dollars to skip a wedding. You are not the idiot, but why are you suddenly so concerned about getting married now after waiting so long? You've waited this long to get married, just wait until the old man dies and the family you like can come to the wedding. Problem solved. Boy, I'd take $1.20 to skip a wedding, but I'm an introvert. They're both nearing retirement age, if one dies the other won't be out of a house or money. I'm guessing it's marriage for next of kin rights and ensuring you take care of each other in retirement. 
Your son is 19 and high on righteousness and moral superiority. Half a million dollars for someone his age is life-altering. It's a college degree without debt. It's buying a house outright in many areas or the difference between paying off your mortgage in 10 years instead of 30. Is your father-in-law an idiot? Of course he is. Does pandering to his prejudices suck? Of course it does. The best revenge your son can have on the old bigoted bastard is to one day start a tradition of saying thanks grandpa every morning when he and his husband wake up in the house that grandpa's money paid for. Why do you have to get a non-traditional relationship with kids out of wedlock for over 20 years? But the second you want to make it official, you have to shove your son back in the closet. It sounds like the money from your partner's father, not your father-in-law. You have to be married for that is contingent on you two marrying. So you're selling your son's happiness for your gains. You are the idiot. Enjoy Shady Pines. And I just noticed that you called your partner your husband repeatedly in this story. He's not your husband as again, you have to be married for that. What happened? My daughter Brooke's birthday was on Friday, so we celebrated at home. Everything was going well until it was time for singing. Brooke blew out the candles and her cousin Aria blew on the cake too. My sister and brother-in-law said oops and apologized. Aria didn't understand. It was just an accident. But then Brooke turned it into a scene. She snapped at Aria raising her voice and calling Aria a stupid brat. I immediately got firm and told Brooke to apologize. Brooke tried to argue that Aria ruined her birthday candles. I told Brooke I don't care who you are or what day it is. It is never okay to treat a toddler that way as a 20-year-old adult. Brooke refused to apologize and stormed off. After everyone had left, I informed Brooke that because she refused to apologize for how she acted towards her cousin, I was returning her purse, which was the main gift I had bought her. She also got a Stanley Cup, but I let her keep it since it's something practical for school. Brooke tried arguing that she was too old for me to confiscate her things, and that returning the purse was going too far, but I just told Brooke that I bought the purse with my own money and was free to do what I pleased with it, and if she wanted to act like a child, then she got treated like one. Why I'm writing. My wife Kimberly said she would not rebuy the purse for Brooke and agreed Brooke was out of line for how she treated Aria during the birthday celebration. But Kim said that I should have more understanding for Brooke because of what's going on with Jesse. Jesse has been Brooke's best friend since they were in fourth grade. The problem is that Jesse recently got engaged and her fiancé is not a good guy. Brooke and Jesse's family staged an intervention to talk to Jesse. But Jesse is insistent on the marriage and has been talking to Brooke less and less. Of course, I understand that is heartbreaking, and I'm sorry Brooke must experience that with her friend. But what is happening with Jesse has nothing to do with how Brooke treated Aria. If Brooke had snapped at Aria but immediately apologized afterward, I could see how returning her purse could be considered unfair. But I think Kimberly is being too lenient with our daughter, and Brooke needs to understand that going through a difficult situation is not an excuse to behave poorly towards others. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. A 20-year-old cursing out a toddler is too far. Also, the irony of this from your daughter, Brooke tried arguing that she's too old for me to be confiscating her things and returning the purse was going too far as she's too old to be behaving like a spoiled brat when he is old. She needs to be able to regulate her emotions when a toddler makes a small mistake. And not apologizing is ridiculous. You can have empathy for her going through a crap time with her friend, but she doesn't need to take it out on others around her, especially little ones, without a concept of their mistakes. Not okay. This wouldn't be acceptable as a social norm in college or at the workplace. Don't let it slide now. Same. I was expecting an age difference of two four years, and neither of them was older than a tween. I'm aghast that a 20-year-old would cuss out a toddler. Returning the purse might seem harsh to Brooke, but it's a clear message that disrespectful behavior won't be tolerated, especially towards family members. Your wife Kimberly appears to agree with the decision too, so you're not alone in this. I was hoping Brooke would learn from this experience and understand the importance of treating others with kindness and respect, no matter what's happening in her personal life. So who was supposed to be supervising the toddler? 
And did Brooke even want the child there? This was likely the straw that broke the camel's back, and it would not be shocking if Opai's daughter is having a breakdown. Yet her parents are more worried about punishing her than recognizing that their daughter is having an extremely rough time. Especially given Op doesn't seem to actually believe that watching Jessica be in an abusive relationship is serious enough to affect Brooke's mental health. I Female 29 was recently invited to a work dinner, as one of my colleagues is retiring. It was being held at a little barbecue restaurant in town. I was told that the dress code was smart casual for context. I wore a nice skirt and button-up and a pair of Crocs. I live in a hot climate and lots of people such as myself wear sandals, Crocs, flip-flops everywhere. When we go to the restaurant, they had a dress code and the hostess loudly told me I couldn't come in wearing Crocs. It was extremely embarrassing in front of my co-workers. I don't really understand the problem because there were people wearing sneakers, Converse, etc. And that's fine, but Crocs aren't. It wasn't even a fancy restaurant so I really wasn't expecting this. Anyway, one of my co-workers urged me to go home, change my shoes, and return. I was so distraught I ended up just going home and not coming back. I suffer from anxiety, and the whole experience just made me melt down. My co-workers are now collectively angry at me for leaving and not coming back. My boss told me the event wasn't about me, and I should have sucked it up. Was I an idiot for leaving? I was told that the dress code was smart casual. Nowhere has that ever meant foam toddler shoes. No matter that Crocs are your standard footwear, this was an occasion with a specified dress code that does not include Crocs. Would you wear them to a wedding? You are the idiot, Opie. Yeah, lady, what made you think that Crocs were business casual or smart casual? They're house shoes for children at best. Try to be more professional. You turned your co-worker's retirement party into an occasion where you were the main topic of conversation, all over a pair of shoes. If your anxiety is so intense that you can't handle being told that you're not in the dress code, you need to get help. Or better help if you're already seeing a therapist. Can you imagine if the whole table is seated inside and waiting for her to return to order? She's just changing her shoes. She'll be here any minute. I'm just laughing at a barbecue restaurant having any dress code more significant than a wife beater, gym shorts, and flip-flops. It's a freaking barbecue joint. Who the heck dresses up for that? Thanks for listening.